Hi, and welcome to your Tadpoles teacher training. Today we are going to go over the entire Tadpoles app and how it will be used in your classrooms. If you have your own iPads there today, please feel free to follow along and click along on your iPads as I do. If you do not have your own iPads there or classroom devices available, you can just watch the video. To get started, we will locate the Tadpoles Pro icon on our home screen, and then we'll click on it to open up the app. For today's training, we are going to click that blue Play With Demo School box. To the right, you will see the purple Log In to School. When you are ready to be logged into your live school, your administrators will be clicking that blue box and using the administrator login information to log in your devices to your school. Again, to log in to your live school, you will have to have your administrators log in the devices for you. So again, for today's training, we're going to click that blue Play With Demo School. This takes us to the home screen of the app where we see Wonderland School at the top. That is the name of our demo school and of course in your live version that will say the name of your school. On this screen you get an overview of information. In the blue boxes you will see how many children are checked in and out as well as how many staff members are checked in. In the purple boxes, the one that I would like to point out to you on the far left is called Sticky Notes. A sticky note is a one-way communication tool that can be sent by your administrators or directors. If they send you a sticky note, then no matter where or what you are doing in Tadpoles, a notification is going to pop up. As a teacher, you can only read these sticky notes. You cannot respond or initiate a sticky note. An example of when your administrators may choose to send you a sticky note is to let you know about their child's schedule change, such as Mia's mom just called and she'll be leaving today at 2 p.m. Anytime parents use their free parent account to add drop-off notes for their child, as the child's teacher, you will receive a sticky note alerting you that drop-off notes were added for that child. If at any time you need to reference a sticky note throughout the day, this is where they live. So when I click on the sticky notes box, I would see the list of all of the notes my device has received for today. When you're finished reading these, the X at the top left will take you back to that home screen. From this home page, we can also change our current view. Currently, we are looking at the entire school as made evident by Wonderland School here at the top. If we needed to change our classroom view, we could do so from this home screen by clicking the Change Class box and selecting which location or classroom we would like to view. To start the training, I do want to remain looking at the entire school, so I am going to make sure I click Wonderland School. Within the app, we can navigate through the different pages by using our fingers and swiping right to left or left to right. Let's go ahead and place our finger on the right side and swipe left. If we do this three times, it will take us to our in and out screen, which is our attendance or roster screen. At the top, underneath in and out it does say Wonderland School, so again it's just a reminder that we are currently looking at our entire school. That means that on this roster page, we see every single staff and student icon that is currently enrolled at our school. All of these icons are currently on the right side of our screen because they are all checked out. As staff or students are checked in, their icons will move to the left side of the screen so we know that they have been checked in for the day. When we look at some of the student icons, we see a note at the bottom. These notes are added by your administrators and will always tell you the most important information you should know about the child, such as an allergy or no photos. 
If you look towards the bottom, some of our student icons are gray and say sick, excused, vacation, out today, unscheduled. That is to let you know that those children are not scheduled to be at school today. However, if they do happen to show up, you will still be able to check them in. From this roster page, we can also look at a child's profile. So let's click on Jacob's icon and select child profile. Inside his profile, we see an overview of information. Typically, as a teacher, you will not be updating any of the information you see here in the profile. Your only job would be updating the profile pictures. To update a child's profile picture or your staff profile pictures, you will open up the profile as we are now and click in the box where the picture is or should be. You can see that opens up your camera. It will be best to center that child or staff member face in the center of the screen. Once it is ready, if you click that blue take photo at the bottom left, that photo will automatically update as the profile picture for you. Since Jacob already has a nice profile picture, I'm going to click the X at the top left. The great thing about those profile pictures, you can update them as often as you would like. So as your children are growing and changing, those profile pictures can be updated to reflect those changes as well. When you're finished looking at a child's profile, you can just click the X and you're back on that roster page. So this roster screen is where you will check children in and out each day. Typically, when you are on your classroom devices, you will just be looking at your own individual classroom. Currently, we are looking at the entire school. And if you are a teacher who typically opens your school each morning, then you will want to start the day looking at your entire school, as this will give you the capability to check in any child, regardless of their age or their assigned homeroom class. So let's pretend for a moment that we are opening teachers and Jacob has just arrived for today. We're going to click on Jacob's icon and choose check in. Then we will select the current classroom or location that we are in with the children. So for today, I will choose a lambs. And now we see Jacob's icon is on the left side of our screen because he has been checked into school. So now let's say Jacob's homeroom teacher has arrived for the day and she's ready to take Jacob to that homeroom class for the remainder of the day. Since we were those opening teachers who first checked Jacob into school today, we can move him to that homeroom class for his teacher. We will click on his icon again and select move child. And now we can select Jacob's homeroom class, which is the puppies. And we see that Jacob is still on the left side of our screen because again, we are looking at the entire school and he is checked into school today. The teacher in the puppies classroom, when she looks at her device and the in and out screen for her classroom puppies, she will also see Jacob on the left side of that screen because he has been moved to that specific location or classroom as well. If you are that opening teacher that starts your day looking at the entire school, then once that arrival movement is finished, you will want to stay looking at just your own classroom. At any point, during the day, if you need to change the classroom that you are currently looking at on your device, you will click Actions at the top right and then select Change Class. Then you will choose the classroom or location that you need to view. For the purpose of today's training, if you are following along on your own devices, 
then please select the classroom that best describes the age level you teach. If you are an infant teacher, please select puppies. If you are a toddler teacher, please select lambs. If you are preschool and older, then select explorers. When you select your classroom, you should see your in and out screen change as well. At the top, you should see your classroom name listed there. And as you can see, you now only can view the staff and student profiles that are assigned to your specific classroom. The first thing that we need to do is clock in our teacher today. To do this, we will tap on her icon and choose clock into building. Now I would like us to go ahead and check in all of our students in our classroom for today's training. Even if they were not scheduled to be here today, Let's click on each icon and choose check in. As you check in the students for your training, you're going to see me jump around just a little bit, but please stay with the classroom that you have selected and checking in just the children in your class. If you take attendance at one set time for your entire class and you need to check in or check out multiple students at a time, if you click actions at the top right, you will see the pink attendance in and out button. This will allow you to check in or out multiple students at a time. Again, that pink attendance button will check the students in and out. Once we have our children checked in on this roster page, if we place our finger on the left and swipe right one time, then we will be on the daily report page. This is where we can begin adding care events and generating the daily reports for our students. To add information to a daily report, we first need to select the child. To select a child, you will tap on their icon on the left, and you see that that icon becomes a circle, and their name is at the top of the page. If you look at the bottom, you can see all of the different items that we can add to this child's daily report. The first item that we're going to practice adding all together is a nap. So once you have a child selected, go ahead and click nap at the bottom. When you are adding a nap to a child's daily report, you first are going to put the start time. If you click now, it is going to insert the current time for you. And this can be adjusted in five minute intervals using the plus or the minus sign. If you tap in the box with the time, a clock will appear at the bottom where you can use your finger to manually adjust that time as well if needed. Then it does want to know the end time. However, we have no idea when our children are going to wake up. So we can leave this blank. When the child wakes up, we can come back and edit or add the end time then. Then you have the option to set the next sleep check. If your school is not going to utilize tadpoles for your sleep checks, then you will leave this set to none. If you will be using tadpoles to monitor your sleep checks, then you will tap in that box and select the time interval needed. For today, I will select a 30 minute sleep check. And later on, I will show you where you can see the sleep check counting down for you. Then below that is a box for notes. For every care event that you can add to a child's daily report, you will always have this note section if needed. This will allow you to add additional information about that care event to the daily report for the family to read. 
So if we needed to tell mom or dad some additional information about this child's nap, we would tap in that box and type out those notes for them. I do want to point out to you that on the keyboard, the return button and the button at the far bottom right, both of those buttons will make the keyboard tuck back down for you. When we click Save, we will see this item has been added to the child's daily report. I would like to talk to just my infant teachers for a moment. So if you are an infant teacher, let's click on Meal at the bottom. When it opens up, we can see at the top that we do have three different options to choose from a bottle, a breastfeeding, or food. Currently, we would be adding a bottle as it is highlighted in blue. You will put the time the child received the bottle, and then you can select the amount that was offered. So this is the amount that you started with in the bottle. Tap in that box and you can choose from the list. Then it wants to know the amount that was taken or that the child consumed. If we do not know this, as the child is just now receiving the bottle, we can leave this blank and I'll show you how you can come back and edit this later. Then it wants to know the contents of the bottle and you can tap on that item to select it. Then you have a place to set the next time that this child should be fed. When you tap in that box, you can choose the time interval needed. And again, here in a little bit, I will show you where you can see this information counting down. Then lastly, it wants to know which teacher in your classroom prepared and which teacher in your classroom provided the bottle for the child. Every teacher that is currently clocked into your classroom their icons will appear beneath both of these items. This will allow you to tap on the correct teacher who prepared the bottle for the child and the correct teacher who provided the bottle for the child. Let's go ahead and click Save and we're going to see that item added to the child's daily report. So now let's say that the child finished the bottle and we need to update that item with how much of the bottle they actually consumed. From the daily report, if we click on those details, it will open back up for us. And you can see that since we left it blank, it did default to that entire amount. So if the child consumed the entire amount of the bottle, you do not need to come back and edit. But if the child did not consume the entire bottle, you will want to open up this entry and adjust that amount taken so that it reflects the current amount taken for the child. When we click Save, we are going to see that that information has updated on the child's daily report. So when the parents receive the daily report, you can see that it does show that the child consumed four ounces of formula, but that we actually offered that child six and a half. If you hang tight, one second, I'm just going to switch my screen to my toddler classroom. So now my toddler, preschool, and older teachers. Let's select a child. And let's come down and click on Meal. When it opens up, you can see that your interface does look different than the infant's. The first item at the top is which meal of the day did the child receive? and you can tap in that box and choose from the list. You will put the time the child received it, and then in each box underneath foods, you will type in the food items that the child received. We do recommend just one food item per box. So tap in the box and type out a food item. You can see that as you type in a food item, another box is automatically going to appear for you in case you need to add additional items. Beneath each box, the words almost, some, 
or none are there for you to add more detail to this meal for the parents. So you can select the word that describes how much of that food item the child actually consumed. To select it, you tap on that word and it will highlight in blue for you. On your devices, you will also see this button that says Past. Today, in your demo version, it may not work for you. So if you look up at my screen, when I click Past, we see a list of all of the previous items I have keyed out. So if the food item that the child is eating is on this list, I can just tap on it and it will automatically insert into the box for me. Let's go ahead and click Save, and we should see that meal and those details added to the daily report for us. I would like to stay with just my toddler, preschool, and older teachers for another moment, and let's practice adding a bathroom break. So we need to come down and click on the word potty. When it opens up, toddler teachers, you should be defaulted to diaper. So you will want to make sure you click potty and that is highlighted in blue for you. Preschool and older, yours should be defaulted to potty. When you're adding a bathroom break, you'll put the time the child went and then the details for that child, tapping on each item as needed. When we click save, we will see this item added as bathroom and then those details beneath. Hang tight, I'm just going to switch back to my infant classroom for a moment. So now my infant teachers, let's come down and click on diaper. Toddler teachers, if you still have children in diapers, Click potty at the bottom again. When it opens up, let's make sure diaper is highlighted in blue as this will allow us to add a diaper change. We'll put the time of the diaper change and then we can select that next time that this child needs his or her diaper changed. It is preset to two hours for us. If we need to adjust that time interval, we can tap in that box and choose which interval is needed for the child. Then you'll select the details of the diaper change, again tapping on each item as needed. And then lastly, selecting that teacher in your classroom who changed the child's diaper. When we click Save, we should see this diaper added to the daily report. If at any time you ever need to go back and edit or delete an item from a child's daily report, you do have that capability. So again, when we're looking at that child's daily report, if we tap on an item, it is going to open that entry up for us. If we make any changes, we will want to make sure that we click that blue save button at the top right so those changes are updated. If you need to completely remove or delete this item from the daily report, then you will click the gray delete button. It will ask you to confirm that you want to delete that item. If you click yes, that item will be completely removed from the child's daily report. For today, I want to leave this diaper on the daily report, so I'm going to click No and exit out of this entry. I don't need to make any updates. You also have the ability to add information for your entire class at one time. To do this, we do need to click on our classroom icon at the top left. We should see an orange box around it and our classroom name at the top of the page. 
If you look at the bottom, you can see all of the items that we can add for our entire class at one time. These items work exactly the same as they did for the individual children. When you are adding items for your entire class at one time from this page, you will want to make sure that all of the children who need that item added are currently checked into that classroom. For example, if a child was still out on the playground, when you add a note for your entire class, if that child was not checked into your classroom yet, they will not receive that note. From this page, we can also pre-enter in activities, lessons, or information that we would like to have show up on our children's daily reports in advance. To access the lesson planning page of our Tadpoles app, you will click Lessons at the top right. On the left side, we see a calendar. If you use your finger, you can see that you can scroll through the calendar and it will go up to one month in advance. Looking at the calendar, we see that there is a box for each week and a box for each day. If I click on the week of September 25th, any information that I add to this week box will automatically populate onto every day in that week. So this is a great place if your school or classroom has a weekly theme to add that information. So once I have the week selected, I can click theme at the bottom, tap in that box, and I can type out that weekly theme. When I click save, I'm going to see that weekly theme is added to the week of September 25th. And as I click through each day in that week, I see it has automatically been added there for me as well. From this page, we can pre-enter in our lessons and activities as well. So I'm going to click on Monday, September 26th. And I would like to go ahead and add in an activity that I plan to do with the children on that day. Once I have my day selected, I will click Activity at the bottom. And this takes me to the lesson planning page. I will first select the subject area. To select the subject area, I tap on the box. In your live version, these subject areas may look different as your administrators have the capability to edit these subjects and goals to match your school's curriculum. When I selected that subject area, we see that the developmental goals associated automatically popped up for me in a list. This will allow me to tag the specific goals associated to my lesson by tapping on them and they will highlight for me. Below that is a box for the description. The description is what is put on the daily report for the children. So this description is what the parents are going to read to understand what their child did for that activity. We do recommend that you always type out a short description here for the parents to read. So tap in that box and we can type out a description for today. Again, on the keyboard, the return button and the bu button at the bottom right will make that keyboard tuck back down for you. Below the description, we have curricular notes and materials. These items do not show up on the children's daily reports for the parents. 
This information stays internally for your, your co-teachers and administrators reference only. So if you needed to make additional notes or information for your colleagues, you could tap in that curricular notes box. Or if you'd like, you can also make a list of all the materials needed. Beneath that, we have options. The options allows you to tag the specific setting of the lessons if needed, and you can tag additional ones as you would like. The last option we have there is children. When you are pre-entering lesson plans, you can identify which children will be engaging in that activity. This is a great place to help you individualize or differentiate your lesson plans. So as I'm creating my lesson plan, I know that on this day, I'm only going to do this activity with Jacob and Grayson. Since I have selected those children, this activity is only going to show on their daily reports. The other children in my class, since they are not tagged to this activity, they are not going to receive it on their daily report. Once I have my lesson plan complete, when I click Save, I will see that information added to that date. Again, this is a place in the app that you can pre-enter in the information that you would like to show on future daily reports. So since I've added this information to Monday, September 26th, I can expect to see it automatically populate onto the appropriate daily reports on that date. At the bottom, I do want to point out that we have the ability to pre-enter in meals as well. So this could be helpful for my toddler and older teachers if you have a set menu in your classrooms each day or week. You can also pre-enter in notes that you would like to have populated on every child's daily report as well. So let's say I know that this Friday I would like to have a note on everyone's daily report to have a great weekend. I can click on Friday. I can click note. If needed, I could add a note to please remind my families to bring in any of the items from the list but I'm going to use this note box at the bottom to type out my own specific note. Which will be have a great weekend. When you have finished pre-entering in any information here on this screen, you can click the X at the top left and that's going to take you back to that daily report page. From this daily report page, if we place our finger on the left and swipe right one time, then we will be on the share screen, which is the camera within Tadpoles. So if you have your devices with you today, you can go ahead, pick them up, point them at something to practice taking a picture, and then click that blue take photo button at the bottom left. So you can see that when you take a photo here within Tadpoles, it kind of becomes the background of this page. On the left side, we have our classroom icon, and then the icon of every child in our classroom. As soon as you take a picture or a video, you will want to tag the children that are in that photo or video. Tagging the children is not only important for security, but it is also what determines whose families are going to receive that photo. If you click on your classroom icon, then you see that it is going to tag all of the children in your classroom as being pictured in that photo. If you look on the right side at the top, we see pictured all. So this means that this photo is going to be sent to every child in that classroom, even if they are not present on the day you took the picture. Or you could select in. And this means that the photo is only going to be sent to all of the children who are currently present or in that classroom today.
I want to make sure that I am tagging just the two children that are in my picture for today. So to tag the individual children, you can click on their icons on the left and you see that they do move to the right side so you know you have selected them as being pictured. Once you have all of the children tagged, you will then select the context or the setting of that photo. You do have the option of fun photo, or you could choose from your gray subject areas. And again, in your live version, these subject areas may be different to match your curriculum. For today, let's just practice by clicking on one of those gray boxes. We see that when we select it, a white box is around it. And at the top, we have a button that says Add Notes and Goals. When you click on that Add Notes and Goals button, it takes you to the page where you can type out the personal note, which is the caption for the photo. So let's tap, type out a caption for the photo by tapping in the personal note box. This personal note is the caption for the photo and is sent home to the families. Then at the bottom you can see you do have the option to tag a specific curricular goal if needed. And to tag that goal you would just tap on it here at the bottom to select. As long as you have your children tagged in the caption written, you are ready to send that photo. If you look up at the top, we have three destinations to choose from. The first is email. It is preset to email and highlighted in green for you. If you choose email as the destination and you click the green send now button at the bottom right, this photo first goes to your administrators for approval. Once it is approved, it will then immediately be emailed to the tagged children's families it will be added to the tagged children's daily report and to the tagged children's tadpoles portfolio. So by selecting email as the destination, you are sending this photo to all three locations. The second option, daily. If you select daily and you clicked the green add to report button at the bottom right, again, once it is approved, it will be added to the tagged children's daily report so the parents will most likely see it at the end of the day, and it will be added to the tagged children's tadpoles portfolio. The last destination at the top, portfolio. If you click portfolio, you can see that your curricular goals have now expanded to allow you to assess the children on those specific goals if needed. If you choose portfolio as the destination and you clicked the green add to portfolio button, this photo is going directly to the tagged children's tadpoles portfolio. Their families are not going to see and are not going to receive the photo. Typically, I recommend email as the destination as I know that our families do enjoy getting these photos and videos in real time throughout the day. So again, once you have that destination selected at the top, just click the green button at the bottom right to send that picture or video. On the share screen at the bottom, you do see there is the option to take a video. It works exactly the same way as it did for a picture and it can be up to one minute in length. Beside video, we see the word album. This will allow us to upload a picture that we took with our device into Tadpoles. So if you took a picture using your iPad's native camera, for example, but you also wanted to send it home to the families via Tadpoles, you would use this album option, select camera roll, Locate that photo to upload into Tadpoles, and then you can send it. From the share screen, if we place our finger on the left side and swipe right two times, then we are on the Memories page. This Memories page is a reference tool for you as the teacher. 
Every item that you send from Tadpoles is automatically stored here for you. This is a great place to come to look at all of the previous photos, videos, daily reports, or notes that have been sent for your children in your classroom. In your live version, this memories page is going to go as far back in time as you have been using Tadpoles. There is no limit. All of this data is being stored by Tadpoles. It is not being stored on your actual classroom device. So if you ever needed to reference a daily report for a child, you could come to this memory screen and when you locate that child's name and date for the daily report, you can click on that box and you see that it does open up for you in a larger version to reference if needed. From this memories page, we're going to go all the way back to our in and out screen. To get there, we will need to place our finger on the right side and swipe left four times. If you look at the bottom of the page, if you are an infant and a toddler teacher, you're going to see a second option or button that says Dashboard. Again, this dashboard is only available to teachers in classrooms that are set as an infant or toddler stage. So if you are that infant or toddler teacher following along today, let's click on Dashboard at the bottom. And we see that we are taken to a screen that has each of our children and a box of information for each child. Within these boxes, you will see the countdowns that you have set for the child. You can see when their next sleep check should be, the next solid food meal, the next bottle, or their next diaper change. As you can see, these countdowns do offer you a visual alert. When an item is overdue, you can see that box does turn red. When an item is within five minutes of being due, the box will turn green. These countdowns do not go on the children's daily report. They are just for your information. When you click on a child from this dashboard page, you're going to see that you have the same options that we do for each child on the daily report page. Since Jacob is currently sleeping and has a sleep check set, my first option for him is sleeping safely. So if I'm completing his sleep check, I will click sleeping safely and you will see that it will reset that sleep check timer for me. Since Jacob is currently sleeping, when I click on his icon again, I see that I have the option to end nap. So if the child has just woke up, you can click from this screen, end nap, and it's going to open up that nap entry that we have added to the daily report. And now we can add the end time or when the child woke up. When you click save, that item is going to be updated on the child's daily report for you. So again, this dashboard page is only available to infant and toddler teachers. The dashboard offers an alternate view of the daily report page. And the advantage to the dashboard is it allows you to see the countdowns for each item for every child in your class. If you are currently looking at the dashboard, go ahead and click roster at the bottom. I do want to go back to our roster page of our in and out screen. This is the page where we check our children in and out of tadpoles each day. From this roster page, there are a few more items or tasks that we can complete. The first being a name to face check. If your school is going to be utilizing tadpoles to complete your name to face checks, then from this screen, click actions at the top right. 
and then select the yellow Name to Face box. Then you will select the teacher in the classroom that is performing the Name to Face check. Then it will prompt you to tap on each child as you visually locate them in the classroom. Once that name to face check is complete, click done at the top right. That name to face check does not go on the daily reports. As soon as you click done, that name to face check is only sent to your administrators. From this roster page, we can also move our children around. So if you think about how your children move around your school building throughout the day, you do want to show those movements or transitions here within Tadpoles as well. Not only does it allow you to maintain accurate ratios, but it will also allow everyone at your school to know where every child is at any given time. You can move one child at a time, or you can move multiple children at a time. So first, let's practice moving one child. It could be that you have one child in your classroom that is going to visit another classroom for just an hour today. From that roster page, you would click on that child's icon, and then select Move Child then you would select that classroom or location that the child is going to visit. When you move a child, you see that their icon does stay on your roster screen because again, that child is assigned to your homeroom class. When you look at the child's icon though, it is gray and at the bottom it tells you where they are currently located. And if you look at your numbers at the top, you see they have adjusted to reflect that one child is out visiting another classroom or location currently. When you move a child, their daily report is going to move with them. Since I moved Maya to the Lambs classroom, the teacher in the Lambs classroom is going to see Maya's icon on their classroom device and will be able to add care events or activities to Maya's daily report if needed. When the visit is over or the child is coming back to your classroom, from the roster page, just click on their icon and choose Move Back. This is going to move that child back to your classroom and it will give you access to the child's daily report again as well. Anytime you move the children around, their daily reports are going to remain intact for you and will show information added by both teachers if that was the case. So now let's practice moving around multiple children at a time. Let's say that we are going to take our entire class outside to the playground. To move multiple children at a time, we'll click Actions at the top right and then we will select Combine or Split. We will choose the destination or classroom or location that they're going to. So I'm going to select Playground. And then we need to tap on each person that needs to go to that location. Once you have them all selected, when you click Done, they are going to be moved to that location. If you took your classroom out to the playground and you are with them, then on your device, if you're taking it outside to the playground with you, you will click Actions, Change Class, and when you select Playground, then you're going to see your children and yourself are located on the playground. And you would be able to add to their daily reports out from the playground as well if needed. When you're coming back inside, to your classroom, you will need to move all of those children and yourself back. So again, we can click Actions, Combine or Split, and now we're going to go back to our classroom, and then we tap on each person that needs to be moved back to the classroom. And then we'll click Done. 
And you can see that from my screen, I am still looking at the playground and I do not see myself or my children. So I do need to change my classroom view back to my classroom. Again, to do this, actions at the top right, change class. When you select your classroom, you will see yourself and your children again. Anytime you are moving the children around or marking those transitions within tadpoles, that information stays internally. It does not show on the children's daily report. If you are moving the children around, but you're not seeing that information update quickly enough from one device to the other, you can refresh your page here within Tadpoles. To refresh your screen, you will place two fingers in the middle and pull down. It will prompt you at the top, release to refresh. And when you lift up your fingers, that page will be refreshed and any changes you were not seeing should update then for you. So now let's say a parent has arrived to pick up their child. From the roster page of our in and out screen, we will click on that child and select check out. When we've checked out a child, we see their icon moves to the right side of the screen. So we know that we have in fact checked them out for the day. Within 60 seconds of checking a child out, Tadpoles is going to take over and will automatically send the child's daily report to the family for you. Again, once you have checked the child out, Tadpoles is going to take over and will send that daily report to the family for you. There is no additional work for you to do. That is all for the training today of the Tadpoles app for you. So again, before I leave you, I just want to remind you that if we go back to the home screen of Tadpoles, if you are following along on your own device today, we are currently in a demo school. You are welcome to stay in this demo mode for as long as you would like to continue practicing and playing around with all of the features. When you are ready to log into your live school, you will need to click Exit Demo at the bottom left, and then you will need to take your device to an administrator to log in for you. Again, only your administrators have the credentials to log in the devices to your live school. Once your administrators have logged in your device, we do recommend that you leave the device logged in. There is no need for you to log out. Thank you so much for joining us for your training today. We do hope that this was beneficial for you, and we are so excited to have you as part of our Tadpoles family.